Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they have to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm so glad that you could join me today. And if you're listening to this, on Podomatic. You can also listen to this podcast on iTunes and, of course, on um, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube. There's uh, several platforms where the show is available, so you can go to womenentrepreneursecrets.com and click on podcast in the menu, and then you can find out where uh, the show is also um, being hosted, and you can listen from those places as well if that's more convenient for you. And if you're listening on iTunes, I'd really appreciate if you could leave uh, feedback or review. That always helps the show to be found by more listeners. So if you could take a moment to do that, that is really appreciated. And also, you can stop by my website, dbaileycoach.com. And if you go there, you can find out more about me, what I'm up to in my books, and also uh, book coaching services that I have available as well. So I hope that you'll check that out. And uh, brightstreetbooks.com is my fiction site. So you can go there as well and check out uh, different books I've written and uh, also see by links and descriptions and things so you can get an idea of what, uh, what I've got out there. Okay, that's great. So we're going to get started. With my guest today, Tess Wicks is a wealth and mindset coach and the founder of Wander Wealthy, an educational platform for online coaches and service-based entrepreneurs. And her mission is to bring financial literacy to the self-employed, to help them see that with the combination of practical financial systems and magical mindset work, they have the ability to transform their money stories and ultimately experience ease when it comes to making money and managing their finances. So welcome to the show, Tess. Deb, thank you so much for having me. Well, this um, is always a very important topic and for some people a stressful topic. So I think um, this will really be a good conversation and very informational for the listeners. But before we dive in, could you just share a little bit about your own entrepreneurial journey and what brought you to what you're doing right now? Of course. So let's see. I always like to share from the get-go that I never thought that entrepreneurship would be a, a path for me to take. I grew up in, actually, I grew up in an entrepreneurial household, but I didn't really think that what my parents were doing was entrepreneurship. They have a brick and mortar construction company, small business. And so thinking like, well, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go <laughs> do things that, you know, a very specific career path. My mom helped me. And I think my parents were very encouraging to find something that, could help you get a job and pay you and would provide you benefits. So it was very mm -hmm. much a go to college, get the education, get a job and kind of climb the corporate ladder type of life. And so mm -hmm. that's what I did. I, I searched for a college that would help me become and kind of oddly become something I had no idea what it was, which was an actuary. Um, mm -hmm. I knew I had mathematical skills, so that's kind of just the direction I thought would be fun to go. Um, <laughs> funny to make a decision of your your future off of that, but right. that's what I ended up doing. And if in that, I guess, experience of learning about actuarial science and finance, it, what's funny is the actuarial profession is really about being risk averse and not being willing to take risk or at least to take calculated risks. Mm -hmm. So I almost like bred myself to become more and more risk averse as I went along. Um, and so I went into the working world and I was an actuary for only two years 
And even one year in, I really kind of looked around and it was probably even before that where I was like, wow, if this is what life is going to be like for the rest of my life, like, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> um, and so I was lucky to have surrounded myself with, um, you know, my roommate at the time. And I was involved in this conference that I had gotten involved in in college and then continued to go to outside of college for young leadership. Um, and it was very entrepreneur focused. And my, my roommate was a independent contractor becoming her own kind of entrepreneur. And so I saw kind of the freedom and flexibility that they were able to build for themselves. And really, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I just wanted to have that type of lifestyle. So I mm -hmm. almost got into entrepreneurship in, in search of that lifestyle. Um, so I took a big leap of faith. I had, as the actuary, I saved a lot of money and got myself into a position where I could take that leap of faith. Um, and then I just started kind of dabbling in different things. I also did independent contracting, working with a content marketing company until I really found out that I could do a lot more for myself, you know, beyond being an actuary. I had really honed into that identity and thought, I don't know if I can do anything else because I don't have the, the schooling and I don't have the experience. Um, so even just exposing myself and dabbling in contract work helped me see that I had skills and abilities outside of the ones that I very specifically had learned and gotten a degree for. And then through that, I, I decided, you know, I was exposed to the world of online business, very different from the entrepreneurship of what I thought was that world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, well, this is amazing. The the world is kind of my oyster now. I just have to decide what I want to do. And I think a lot of us get overwhelmed with that realization of like, oh, I could build a business okay. out of almost anything. What is it I want to do? So I really thought about the people I wanted to help. And I thought about my own journey becoming an actuary and taking finance classes and just my experience of really starting to understand personal finances in general. And um, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to help my peers who didn't have the educational experience that I had in the finance world, um, but even help myself because as a student of finance, I was uh, one of the few females in the room and I felt really intimidated by the topic, by potentially not knowing the answer to some of the things that I thought should be or seemed like everyone else knew what, and it was common sense to them. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to start a discussion and provide a place for women specifically to have a conversation about money and learn about money in a way that was empowering to them. Mm -hmm. So I started down the road of creating content and coaching uh, traditionally employed women. And over the past six months to a year, I've really been pivoting into working with self-employed women, um, those who run their own businesses, mostly service-based, helping them understand both the business finance aspect and the personal finance aspect. And, you know, it's just a whole group of people that have additional challenges that even the traditionally employed don't necessarily face. And so mm -hmm. I really wanted to help provide financial literacy, just as you said, to that world. So that's, that's my coming to coming of age story in the entrepreneurship world. That's terrific because it wasn't uh, the direction that you were expecting to go into at first. Not at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's true of a lot of people. They don't end up where they thought, you know, they start in one place and then they wake up uh, and realize, hey, this is where I really want to be. And it's not mm -hmm. really what they planned when they started out. Yes. <laughs> that seems to be a big um, entrepreneurial story, but the really uh, dive into the, the topics about money and money mindset and also the more practical things as well that people need to uh, consider. But if you want to start a bit, I guess, to talk about, you know, mindset. Why don't we, we start there? What are, you, what are your thoughts about the impact of that? Yes. So I think that mindset plays a huge role in for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. we all have grown up with this belief and it's all different for every single person because we are influenced by most heavily by the people that raise us. And so you'll find a lot of times that some of the 
beliefs that you have about money, whether that's how much debt you're allowed to have or how much money you're really allowed to make or Mm -hmm. how much you should really be saving. Or um, one of my clients even had mentioned how much you should spend on sheets. You should never spend less than a hundred dollars on sheets, right? Mm -hmm. These (laughs) often come from something you've picked up along the way. And for her, it was, my mom always told me I should never spend more than a hundred or less than a hundred on sheets. So that was the rule that I just believed. Like I didn't know there was another option. (laughs) So as simple as that to as kind of big and complex and a little bit heavy in terms of how much money are people like us allowed to make or Mm -hmm. spending money on these types of things. That means that you're bad or you're greedy or, oh, you didn't really do much to earn that money, so you are undeserving. We have Mm -hmm. so many deep-seated beliefs and feelings that we might not even realize we have Mm -hmm. about money. So the uncovering of those beliefs and then working on them to reprogram them, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about money mindset. And I find Mm -hmm. that entrepreneurs and women, especially, this is the work we need to be doing. You know, I just Mm -hmm. had, I was just personally emailing with a client that I've been, I have done work with in the past and we were discussing pricing and they need something last minute. And I was like, talking to my mom. I happen to be home. I I usually live actually overseas, but I happen to be home Mm -hmm. this week. And I was talking to my mom and (laughs) of all people, I was was like, should I charge a 20% surcharge? I mean, it's a really last minute thing. I'm going to have to move things around. And I had talked to her about the wording of the email and she was like, don't ask, tell them. A man (laughs) would never ask. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. (laughs) And so even, you know, as women, And and this isn't, you know, specifically, I think Mm -hmm. this is a generalization, but a lot of us feel guilty about charging more money or feel like we're doing, you know, we're Mm -hmm. we're a nuisance or we just undervalue ourselves. And so in that way, like money mindset plays a huge role in being able to make the amount of money that you truly deserve or that your business just needs to be able to Mm -hmm. run and grow. And, And I find it a lot with various... Uh, women that I work with in the entrepreneurial space, in the various ways that they work and serve others and how important it is to really have a strong understanding of Mm -hmm. what beliefs may be holding you back and how to reprogram those and what exercises to do to really get yourself to the point where you can make more money and you can just ask, well, you don't have to ask, you just tell them, this is what I, this is what I, oh. Well, that's true. That's true. I think there is just that reluctance to say that out loud. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what my work is worth. And that's that. And I'm not giving you all these discounts and all these this and that. What are your thoughts on that, though? Because I know that some people feel that, oh, I always have to mark what I do down or I have to somehow make it affordable to everybody. And I don't think that's the way to go. But I mean, I'm sure you've encountered that with people you work with who kind of feel that that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, you're talking to the person who deals with this all the time because I charge people who need help with their money. So if anyone (laughs) feels pressure to discount their work, I mean, you're looking at it. (laughs) But a lot of conversations that I have with my peers, especially those who work in the coaching sphere, Mm -hmm. it can be really, really difficult as a coach because what you're, what you think you're charging for is your time and you're wondering, well, what is my time worth and your value? And so you're wondering, well, what am I worth? Mm. And that can be really difficult to do when we make the money conversation so personal, Mm -hmm. because when you hear a no, you take it personally. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, we need to depersonalize these numbers. And so we just know, well, Yes, I add value, but you add an uncalculable, I don't even know if that's a word, but (laughs) a a, a limitless amount of value, you know, so we almost have to just like pick a number, any number. Um, But what we can really do is get down to more of those practical numbers and define, okay, well, what, what do I need for 
to get paid just because I want to live this type of lifestyle. I mm-hmm. think a lot of us get into business for a certain lifestyle at the very mm-hmm. minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, or what is, what does it cost for me to be running my business? I need to add tax and I need to be profitable so we can actually build up the numbers in a more uh, concrete way without making it personal. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I always say, and this is where I really have gotten into these conversations with some of my peers who are in the uh, the business of coaching is this quote, which I don't know who, who coined it, but it's very true. Those who pay, pay attention. And in a lot of ways, by discounting your service or your product for mm-hmm. people just to make it more affordable for them, mm-hmm. you can be doing them a disservice because when we pay money, we put skin in the game. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, you know, I I mean, I have even done this. If a product is super cheap, I'll buy it. And then it'll sit in my, one of my, on my computer, or I'll have the login and I'll never log into it ever again. Or maybe I'll get halfway through. And it's really hard to stay accountable to things that are super easy sunk costs that we never Mm -hmm. have to really think about again. Mm -hmm. And you almost have to do that due diligence of finding that price point that's going to be a little bit out of your potential client or customer's comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So they really feel like there's skin in the game and it's going to help them commit to themselves because especially from the service-based side, you know, you can only do so much as a coach or as a service provider, you really have to have them show up. So what's going to motivate them to show up? And in some cases it's not money, but in a lot of cases that can be the thing that keeps them coming back because they realize, oh, an hour, it's not even an hour of your coach's time. It's an hour of your time that you've invested for that's worth something. So they, you know, they're no longer going to cancel at the last minute or not take it seriously, not do their homework or whatever it is you want them to do. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes a lot of sense, I think, because there's so many things that are given for free. Um, mm-hmm. And then you may have, I know I do, like, you know, my laptop, it just has folders full of uh, PDFs, <laughs> free things. <Yeah. laughs> that, <laughs> at that moment, it's like, oh, that's interesting. But do, yeah. do I go back and see what it is? And maybe there's good stuff. Maybe it's just really a teaser. But I have so many of them that then I end up forgetting where I got them and, and what the point <laughs> was. And that's very true. There, There isn't that commitment there on my part because I'm just grabbing this thing and then putting it aside and then really not a lot of times even using it, um, you know, to my own benefit. So I, I totally, totally agree with that. It seems like we need to be setting revenue goals and and real ones you know not just kind of sitting there scratching your head and guessing oh i right. think i want this i think i want that how how can we do that though if especially if we're walking into this entrepreneurship thing and we're not even sure what, how we should be doing this yeah so that's a perfect question and it fits perfectly into this is kind of the thing I have my clients do so they can price their services with confidence. So Mm -hmm. setting, I call it purpose-driven revenue goals, really helps you do so many things that inform so many decisions. And one of those decisions can be the pricing piece. Mm -hmm. When you have purpose behind the revenue goal, you can break it down into pricing and then go forward and, you know, say your Mm -hmm. price with confidence because you know exactly how that's built up. Mm -hmm. So when Mm -hmm. we're talking about um, revenue goals, it is so important to have something that you're shooting for. And when what, what I see a lot of business owners do is they'll set revenue goals by either first mistake is just wanting to replace their income from mm-hmm. their you know previous gig. Mm-hmm. And that can be problematic for a handful of reasons. One, you know, I got into entrepreneurship. Another reason, and I think a, a good reason for all of us is to close that gender pay gap, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we're just trying to match our, our previous wages, which a lot of people, if you look at the research, and a lot of women specifically, don't charge nearly as much as their male counterparts, even mm-hmm. in entrepreneurship. So mm-hmm. we need to come to you know check ourselves in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then the other thing is when we're just trying to replace our income, a lot of times we're not thinking about all the additional costs that go into being an entrepreneur. So if you made $60,000 a year in your full-time job, and now you're just trying to make $60,000 a year in revenue from your business, you're not accounting for taxes, which I think, okay, maybe we start thinking about, but you're also not accounting for all of the additional costs that are going to go in mm. to building your business. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it gets complicated with the taxes and that, and, and then of course, profitability and paying yourself. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to just set our goal of, okay, I want to replace what I'm making. We really want to do the math to figure out what's it going to take so that I can continue to live this lifestyle or mm -hmm. expand beyond it. Right. The other way that I think a lot of people go off path and get a little bit distracted is chasing after what I call vanity numbers. So we've seen this all over the internet. If you've been on Facebook in the last five years, you've probably mm -hmm. seen an ad to make a 5K month or a 10K month. Yes. A figure <laughs> month. And yes. there's a lot of marketers out there, which, hey, I understand, you know, having that shiny 10K month or five-figure month kind of marketing story is wonderful. It, mm -hmm. That's exactly what people want. Mm -hmm. But – having a goal of just making six figures this year or having a goal of, you know, hitting those 10K months, we don't actually know if you haven't done the, the homework to figure out, is that actually what you need? In some mm -hmm. cases, that could be way more than what you really need or even would like to have for mm -hmm. the type of lifestyle you're trying to live. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're actually, you know, even from a mindset perspective, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Um and in other cases, it might not be nearly enough compared to where you really want to be shooting for. And so let's get really specific about what it looks like. Um, I've created a really easy way to calculate your purpose-driven revenue goals. And I find that, you know, with just a few, even a few minutes, you can really sit down and identify what is it going to take to reach those revenue goals. Mm -hmm. That's great. That would be extremely helpful to have because I, I think what you're saying is so true and, and I've mentioned this before in, in conversations is that it's so overwhelming to see all of these things and ads and, and uh, uh, pitches or whatever out here saying these big numbers that of course sound wonderful mm -hmm. but then you're not really thinking well how do we get there and what do I really need and how do I want to live and those are the questions a lot of times we never ask ourselves. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I don't know if you want me to go into the equation, but I'd be happy to. <laughs> sure, sure. That'd be perfect. Yes, thanks. So in a lot of ways, it is sitting down and asking yourself, what do I need? What do, mm -hmm. I, what do I need in order to live the life that I'm currently living? What are those costs that I need to cover? And a lot of people don't do this. You know, they go into business and then they have some sort of revenue and then they just kind of take money randomly from their business to cover mm -hmm. their costs instead mm -hmm. of really sitting down and planning this out. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll have my clients do, and I actually do this in three tiers, but if you just wanted to do get one goal and be done with it, you can do that, um, is sit down and ask, you know, what do I need or what would I like or what do I ultimately dream of having? So that's, you mm -hmm. can see, I build it out into need, want, and dream very similar to the good, better, best kind of goal mm. setting methodology. Mm -hmm. And so once you determine what are those costs on a personal level that you need to cover as if, you know, you were just making some a W-2 income, if you can identify what those costs are, add them up, figure out what they are on an annual basis. A lot of us skip out on, I don't know, if you pay your car insurance every six months or you pay a gym, mem gym membership or some other membership once a quarter or once a month or once a year, we can forget some of those bigger annual costs. So figure out what it is on an annual basis and mm -hmm. total that up. Like I said, you could break it up and do need. So in some cases, you might just want to cover your bare bones or maybe you have a partner who is help support the supporting the family while you're building your business. And so you really don't need much at all. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you have a full-time job that pays for all the bills. So then maybe you just want like a hundred bucks to cover your cell phone bill or something. You can go as big or as little in the need column, but then we build up from there and define, okay, what could you add to this 
on an annual basis mm -hmm. that would be a nice motivator, something that you want to have in your life and add it, that in there. And it can be a bunch of things or it can be just one thing that you would really like to aim for. And then I also have my clients build out their dream income. You know, what would you love to make? For me, I'd love to retire my partner and hire, actually, I'd love to hire him. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> I could use some help. And so I need to define, okay, if I'm going to take home the pay for the two of us, then what, how could I figure out what that would look like? And that would be my dream. So you can build those out in three tiers, but let's just start with your need. So you would take that annual number. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do the same exact thing for your business. What are those annual costs that you encounter for your business? What do you need? What are those base level costs? And then, of course, you could build up into want and dream and add in, you know, maybe you have seven employees or maybe you match your 401, your own 401k or whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. You can build that out from there. Um, but let's say you take that need total annual costs that you have to run your business. So I'm talking about all those business expenses, like your com maybe you need a new computer or maybe you're paying for monthly for um, email marketing or Zoom. Um, so total all of those up and find that number. Mm -hmm. Then what I do is I have my clients talk to their tax advisor and help them define a percentage of revenue that they should be setting aside for taxes. Now, this can get confusing because a lot of people set aside a percentage of their profit, but mm -hmm. I find that that can be really hard to predict because maybe mm -hmm. your costs aren't as high or maybe mm -hmm. they are much higher than usual. So I like to base it off of revenue and usually, you know, over save. And then if you have money left over, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. So I'll have them meet with their tax professional and determine a percentage of overall revenue to be setting aside for taxes. And for the most part, you'll find like between 15 and 20% is a really good place to, to be. Mm -hmm. And then I also like my clients to define what percentage would you like to set aside for profit? And this is something that a lot of people don't do because they assume that they just have to take what they can get at the end of the year, which usually is nothing. Mm -hmm. And instead we build that in. It's the pay yourself first method from personal finance, but mm -hmm. it's really building that into the equation. And I always build, whether I'm teaching people personal finance or business finance, we build in our savings before we define what we get to spend. Mm -hmm. So that's really important for me. Mm -hmm. So we can define, you know, maybe it's 1%, maybe it's 5%, maybe you're, it's 10% for you of your revenue that you want to just be setting aside. That profit helps you make decisions that could lead to a better future for your business. It could help you say no to things that, you know, maybe you have a client who is just not helping you physically, mentally, emotionally. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. like hindering you and you would like to fire them. So having some extra set aside can be helpful for that. Mm -hmm. um, or you could just take it and reward yourself for being an awesome business owner. That's a great way <laughs> to use your profit too. Mm -hmm. But having that set aside is a really good uh, place to start. So let's include that in that purpose-driven equation. And again, because we're using this number to inform our pricing, then we're putting profitability into our pricing from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So once wow. you have all of those numbers, you can total up your business expenses, those annual expenses you figured out, and your annual income needs. You can find a total. So mm -hmm. for this case, we'll just call it $100,000 to get a nice round number. And then what I also want you to do is total up your tax percentage and your profit percentage and figure out what that decimal is. So for percentages, we want to divide it by 100 and get it in decimal form. So in this case, let's call it 30%. Mm -hmm. So then what you can do is you can divide your $100,000 by one minus your 30%, which is 0.3 since we're dividing that by 100. Mm -hmm. And what you end up with is like $143,000 um, because you're taking 100 divided by 0.7. This is the not sexy part. This is the part <laughs> that people are like, oh, the number right. is math. I can't. Um, I have a download. It's super easy. You can download it for free off my website. And I even send you an email with a video that walks you through the math part because I get it. I know a lot of people who, you know, they just, their, their toes curl up and they want to hide themselves when the math part comes out. Right. 
But what this gets us, when we actually back out into our revenue numbers, we're able to go, okay, let's call this our dream, you know, our dream income, mm-hmm. $143,000 in revenue will allow me to take home the amount of money I want to make. Mm-hmm. It'll allow me to pay all of those expenses. It'll allow me to have taxes set aside so that I can pay my taxes without breaking a sweat every year. Mm-hmm. And I'll have profit baked in to all of this so I can actually be profitable for once without wondering if it's going to happen or not. Mm-hmm. So that's where you're infusing that number with purpose. (laughs) Wow. That's terrific though. I, I like that because it shows people how they can now figure this out, walk through it, understand it, what it really means to them personally. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And a lot of times that is not what happens when you hear about those numbers. And as you said, people aren't really sure how this applies to you personally, how this applies to your life and your business. You're just hearing numbers and thinking that's what I should be doing Mm -hmm. and not doing this work to see, well, what is really what you need to do and and what will pay what you need to pay? Um, Yeah. 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 I like the idea of that. Um, Could you share the link uh, where people can download that or would they just come to your website? Of course, you can go to wanderwealthy.com slash roadmap. Mm-hmm. It's, I call it the easy profit roadmap. And I share even how to build out a system to implement this once you do define that. Um, but I believe it's step two uh, in which you need to define what your revenue goal is. So then that I give you the math to help yourself define what that looks like. Yeah, that's going to help people not to be so stressed about those numbers. If they I know. <laughs> That will help a lot because I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize when they go into business and suddenly it's like, yeah, the numbers part. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They weren't ready for that. (laughs) So That's why I do what I do. (laughs) Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. That's just what's needed because I think that's the thing, particularly for people coming out of the workplace, that kind of thing, where maybe unless you had something going on on the side, perhaps, or something, or or you came from that kind of background, you may not even have done this on the scale. So I think that's great that you that you have this prepared. Um, so um, Tess, could you please share where um, other places where people can find you? Yes. So I, my website has a lot of different um, resources and tools for everyone. So you can just go to wanderwealthy.com to catch me there. Otherwise, I personally love to hang out on Instagram and my handle is at Tess underscore Wix. And yeah, I'm sure that people will take advantage of all that because we definitely need to know how to manage things for ourselves. And um, I think that was a great point that you also made about if someone is like, well, I just, you know, want to pay for my cell phone service or something, they can figure that out. You know, everything doesn't have to be a grand plan everyone's not trying to build their empire um yeah. you know maybe you just want to get x amount to do something with and that's yeah. great yeah, yeah i think that a lot there's a lot of the six figure business or seven figure business mm-hmm. out there and we see that and we can feel that pressure mm-hmm. just because it seems like everyone is doing it, so we have to do it too. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the keeping up with the Joneses in the business Mm -hmm. world. And Mm -hmm. some, I find that some of my clients, they just want to build a business that gives them the freedom that they wanted, you know? So maybe Mm -hmm. that's just the ability to stay home with their kids Mm -hmm. in, you know, and have that flexibility of being with their kids when they're home from school or hanging out with their kids two days a week and Mm -hmm. then, being able to send them to daycare or something and, you know, or maybe it's the ability to travel or whatever that looks like mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily require a six figure business or a mm. seven figure empire. It mm-hmm. can quite literally just be something that for them is exactly what they need. But I mm-hmm. think the world that we're in and a lot of the marketing that we see in here can almost feel you know, like, oh, well, I guess I don't belong in this world because that's not Mm. what I'm after. And so Mm -hmm. this really just allows them to identify what their numbers are, gives them the purpose behind shooting for those numbers and not feeling bombarded with the pressure of having to reach 
you know, the Mm -hmm. six figure business or the 10 K months or whatever they're constantly Mm -hmm. hearing or seeing. Mm -hmm. That's a great point as well, because I think that's something that is important to note that people may feel, Oh, I can't fit into this because that's not what I'm doing. Or maybe it's not really what they want to do. And yeah, thinking, well, that's what entrepreneurship is. I guess that's not for me, you know? So I, I think it's great to really to make that note to the people who can hear that and know that, you know, no, you don't have to follow that path. But that's real, not really what you want mm-hmm. to do. Exactly. Yeah. And that's important um, to note. And I think, you know, as we started like talking about mindset and, and what people think and, and what's possible for them, it really sounds like that the, the mindset part really is the foundation of people even believing that they can do these things. Mm-hmm. And, and as you were saying, just to say, well, you know, um, if this is a rush or, or whatever, you know, this is my price and this is, but I think it's worth. Yeah. And yeah. And I think that's so important for, for women in particular to really accept that. <laughs> for <themselves>. Yeah. <laughs> accept it, own it, exclaim it to everyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think, I think we can, often trip ourselves up there um, with those doubts and Mm -hmm. just to know that you don't, you know, you can take charge of that and and really let people know what you're doing and that this is the worth of it Um, is it's really such an important step to take, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're starting out. So I I really, really appreciate, um, you know, appreciate you tying all that together because it it really – uh, needs to be tied together also with the practical and the steps and the how you can really uh, define that. So Tess, we, we've had a fantastic conversation. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Oh, I think I can leave you with um, a little, just something that I've been experiencing recently. Mm-hmm. And so I feel called to share mm-hmm. in, and it's that, and, and you've seen in my story that I've done, I've gone through a lot of changes and pivots in the business that I've built. And so I just posted recently the, the affirmation that it is safe for you to change your mind. It's safe Mm -hmm. for you to pivot. You know, you're not starting over from scratch. Mm -hmm. You're starting from experience and the knowledge that you built in that one phase. And now you get to go into another phase. And I've been going through a pivot, as you know. So Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you are sitting here wondering if the business that you're building is the right one for you or, you know, that maybe you it's too late to change. It's Mm -hmm. never too late. You can absolutely do it. And it is safe for you to pivot. That's another wonderful point. Wow, this has been a really fantastic conversation, Tess. I'm so glad you could join me today. This has been informative, and I always learn a lot uh, myself. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Deb, thank you. I have had fun chatting with you as well, and I'm glad we got to dig into all of the good money stuff. Yes, yes, because that can be really scary sometimes. <laughs> so <Yeah. it's- laughs> Not when I'm here. See, that's good. That's good to hear. That's great to hear. And I'm sure everybody <laughs> listening feels that way too, because this this could be a scary topic for a lot of us. So I'm so happy that um, you're here to help us to to make sense of that. So that that is just fantastic. And of course, listeners, uh, the roadmap. All this will be in the show notes, so you can definitely go and check that out and, and learn more, um, which I think will benefit everyone who is uh, starting a business or already involved in one is definitely something that we need to take charge of and uh, not be afraid of. So um, please make sure you do that. <laughs> Just keep <laughs> emphasizing that because that is really, that's really key to everything. So listeners, this has been a wonderful conversation. I know you enjoyed it. Please make sure you share this on social media, share this with your friends. And as I said, don't forget to uh, leave a review on um, iTunes. That would be great. Um, and just let uh, let us know what you think. So once again, it's been Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I am so glad you could join me today, and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on facebook.com slash women entrepreneurs and on the website, womenentrepreneursecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on dvcoach.podomatic.com and on iTunes.